Hello friends, my name is Jess. Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. Today I want to show you guys a trick I learned years ago uh, to help you grow a little bit of food over the winter months. I actually haven't utilized this trick in a long time. This is something I learned when I lived in town. Whenever I grew food in pots on my back porch um, and a lady that I went to church with grew her greens this way. And I was thinking about it the other day. I've had a lot of people message me asking, hey, what are your plans for overwintering? What are your plans for growing your food in the winter? And one thing that I hate paying full price for at the store is salad greens because they are so easy to grow. All different kinds like baby spinaches, baby kales, baby chard, all of these things. I mean, they come to maturity during the warmer months in, in just a few weeks. It might take a little bit longer through the winter when there's not as much sunlight, but still they're frost hardy a lot of times down to like 15 degrees. I have harvested kale out from underneath the snow before. Now it does stunt its growth to not get the amount of light that it would get during the spring and summer. So you have to take that into consideration when you're planting these things. You're not gonna get them as quickly as you would in the warmer months. However, today I just wanna show you this really quick and affordable trick uh, that you can do to have salad greens all winter long, no matter what your living situation is. If you're in a rental where your landlord has told you you can't put in a garden, you can still do this. If you're in an apartment where you have a back patio area or a porch, you can do this. Or if you're in a rural setting like this you've got a small farm but you just want to situate something up by your door that'll be easy to maintain and easy to harvest when it's really cold outside you can do this right here I've got a few things most of which you may already have laying around your house first I've got a box cutter of course you can use scissors too I have a screwdriver that I'm gonna use to poke holes in this bag um, and you could use any pokey thing. Um, I have a plastic container. This is a 90 quart container. Um, it was something around like seven dollars at Walmart. Uh, you could get any of them. You could get one that's larger than this. You just want to match it to about the size of your bag of soil that you're going to have. I have a couple of packs of seeds and here I have a one and a half cubic foot bag of organic potting mix. Baby greens are just things that you cut young. I mean like if you plant charred seeds it'll grow into big charred stalks like you know you've seen in markets and grocery stores. However if you cut them off whenever they're just a few weeks old when they're this this long, you would call that a baby green. It's not um, a specific variety, it's not something that's marketed for that. Sometimes you'll find seed packets from companies that says like salad mix or mesclun mix, uh, baby greens mix, all that is is a variety of seeds of larger plants that they advise you to plant much closer together and harvest much sooner. However, if you were to spread those seeds out, give them ample space and the time to grow in full size plants, they would. So today I'm gonna be planting flashy butter oak lettuce and Mizuna red streak mustard. I got these seeds at Baker Creek and in my gardener. One thing you can grow in this container is kale. Um, if you are wanting to grow those a little bit larger and not just harvesting them very small for salads, you just want to space them out a little bit more. I'm going to be sowing these things really densely because I am going to be harvesting these very young for the purpose of eating in salads throughout the, the winter months. If you like spicy, arugula and mustards are a really good option, but if you want something a little more mild, I would stick with the butter crunch and romaine type lettuces or kale. Um, chard has kind of that earthy flavor. Basically, what we're doing here is we are using the bag that the potting soil came in as a container for this container garden. And we're going to use this tub inverted as a greenhouse. The reason why we're doing this instead of simply putting the soil in the tub and planting in the tub, which you could do, but one, if I did that, I would have to poke holes in this tub for drainage, therefore ruining it to ever be used for any other purpose. The other thing is, is that I would need a clear lid if I did that because um, otherwise I wouldn't be able to put the lid on this and have the same amount of exposure to the sun. My, my bag of soil here and the first thing that I'm going to do is on one side I'm going to put some drainage holes directly in the bag. Now this doesn't have to be crazy, you're not going to do it wrong, you just want to make sure that the water can get out of this bag. So 
I don't know how many that is. They're just a few inches apart, spaced all over this side of the bag. And the next thing I'm going to do is turn this over so the holes are facing down on the lid of my container. Now, if you don't have a lid, if you just have a container with no lid, um, you could do this directly on the ground and just leave the bag laying on the ground. Um, you could do it on a table. You could do it on another surface. The reason why I'm gonna go ahead and leave it sitting on the lid is because it'll just make it a little easier to move where I can get up underneath it, carry it around on this lid. So I've got a box cutter. And what I'm gonna do on this side is try to flatten my bag out a little bit so that it's not all wonky. And I'm actually just going to cut the top of this plastic off on this bag. Um, I'm not cutting into the sides. As you can see, I've got just kind of a panel cut out where I'm leaving the sides good and intact because I want them to hold the soil. I might have even cut that one just a little bit lower. So I'm gonna give this side a little bit more space. You can grow greens in a bag like this all year. You can grow a lot of things in a bag like this. Um, obviously nothing with really deep roots. This won't work for carrots. Um, I wouldn't try this for things like peppers or tomatoes, like tender things, because if it gets really cold, this tub is probably not gonna keep things up above 32 degrees. It's probably not gonna keep this soil super warm, but it suffices for frost hardy varieties like greens and lettuce. So I've got this panel cut out. I'll show you guys right here. I've got my panel cut out. I probably should have left a little bit more room on this side to make sure it holds the soil in, but as you can see over here, I left a little more space and it'll probably be a little neater in the long run that way. Okay, so I've got a little cultivator tool and all I'm doing here is just breaking this soil up because they tend to get a little bit compacted when you're dealing with bagged soil. If your soil really was packed in and breaking it up makes it like protrude massively out of the bag, like this was actually somewhat compacted. And as you can see, it's kind of like made this soil taller than the edges of my bag. I'm just gonna remove a little bit of this. Oh, hello, Kitten George. Don't worry, I'm not doing anything here. I'm just gonna remove a little bit. <laughs> no, Kitten George, go on. Go on, go on. Shoo, shoo. I went and got a pot because upon breaking up this soil, as you can tell, there's kind of a lot more than what this bag comfortably holds held open. Um, it was just packed in there. So I'm just gonna remove a little bit of this soil so that whenever I water this, I don't have to worry about my seeds getting washed away. I want this to be nice and loose and fitting in my open bags. It feels good to get my hands dirty. This time of year doesn't offer just a whole lot of planting. I'm gonna put some potatoes in soon, some garlic. And that might be it for the next couple of months. Okay, so I feel good about how this looks. So I've got my loose soil in my bag, cut open, holes on bottom, and now I need to plant. That's what we call a garden manicure right there. I'm gonna go wash these so I can touch my camera and show you guys what we're doing. Lettuce seeds are tiny, and if you are wanting to plant them for head lettuce, you wanna space them out, but in this case, planting them, knowing that we're gonna harvest them as baby greens, you can sow them really close together. Now, baby greens are often called cut and come again uh, greens, salad greens. A lot of times it'll say cut and come again. And what that means is you can harvest these salad greens more than once and they continue to grow back. The thing is, is you don't want to just clear cut across the entire thing, taking every single leaf that's there. Um, you wanna kind of pick some here and there throughout it because you need to leave you know, at least 25% of the plant or so for it to continue to be able to photosynthesize and grow if you cut all of the leaves off. Sometimes just a little nub that you leave will grow back, but it takes a really long time. It's best if you're growing greens like this where you have this one bag that's gonna be full of greens to come in and kind of pick your salad greens throughout the entire thing instead of just grabbing a whole bunch from one area. That way your plants can continue to grow and you can continue to harvest salads throughout the season. So I've got my seeds here 
and essentially what you do with really tiny seeds like this is you surface sow them and I'll show you what that looks like. Since I'm going to plant two varieties in my bag, I'm just going to stick um, half of this bag I'm gonna plant as my butter oak lettuce and I'm just gonna sow it right across the surface. I'm gonna use this entire pack since these are gonna be harvested as baby greens. I'm not worried about them being too close together. And I just take my hand and just spread those out and I'm just covering those up super lightly. I'm not trying to sink them down and in or anything like that. We just want them barely covered up with soil. I might take a little bit of my soil out of my pot here and sprinkle it on top. If we cover them too much, they won't germinate. So now I'm gonna do the other side with my mustard. My soil is pretty wet because it got rained on a couple days ago, so I'm not gonna water it right now. But at this point, you would normally water this with a watering can, something that's gonna be a really light uh, stream of water. You don't wanna get a hose on it because you're gonna misplace all your seeds. Nothing that's gonna displace the soil. And to finish off our project, I'm just going to put my greenhouse over the edge of this bag. If you have some warm days or if you're getting just a ton of condensation in here, if it's just super humid and you're concerned about it, you can just uh, bring something out and just barely prop this up to allow some airflow. That really is just gonna depend on the region that you're in, the kind of weather that you're having here in Arkansas. We're still having days in the 60s and our nights are only getting down into the 40s, so I could probably do that. I'm gonna leave it down just to see what happens. I'm kind of curious to see um, how it does right now with this particular mix. Now don't forget, because you are covering up the entirety of this thing with a non-permeable substance, you have to water these. The rain is not gonna do the job. Uh, with these little bitty seeds, that's actually kind of a beneficial thing here at the beginning because one heavy rain could wash all your seeds out. So you do want to keep it mostly covered or propped until these things really take root. And after that, if you're having warm days and you feel like it's going to be okay, you can take it off. If you get to where you're growing these greens, you know, let's say we're getting into like January and it's really cold, but your greens are still doing well in there and you want to keep them going, and you're concerned that you're gonna be getting down, I'm talking like into like the single digits or below where you might actually start threatening a cold hardy plant like uh, these baby greens. One thing you can do to help maintain some of the warmth in here that it's gonna gather up from the sun is just mound up some hay or some straw around the edges. You could even use leaves, just something that you have around your yard that will uh, help retain some of the heat into this soil. So if you just mounded them up around the edges and whenever you have to access it, move them out of the way, access your greens for watering or picking and then cover it back up and mound the mulch back up around it. It's the same concept of mulching if you had these things planted in a bed. So there we have it, a really simple project that you can do in like less than 10 minutes with less than $20 worth of materials. You probably have a tub like that laying around your house. You might even have an extra bag of soil left over from earlier on in the year. But if you do have to go buy this stuff brand new, I spent $14 on this project, not including the seeds, which I did already have. One thing to remember that you want to place this in full sun. You don't put it in a place that's gonna be shady uh, because the winter months do already have such shorter daylight hours. You wanna find a spot that's gonna get as much sun as possible. Secondly, don't forget to water it. <laughs> if you are the type of person that forgets to water things, put it up by your front door, put it on your porch, put it somewhere where you're gonna walk past. That way uh, you won't neglect it and let it dry up. Other than that, enjoy your salad greens. If you have a desire in your heart to grow food, please just start. Even small things like this make a big difference in the long run because while this isn't gonna make a huge dent in your grocery bill, it will be incorporating food that you grew into your diet. It will be encouraging to you that you are able to do something. I'm telling you, just start. If you wanna grow your food, you can grow your food and you should grow your food. It's such an encouraging thing to maintain any level of food sustainability. And I always say this, Whenever I'm eating that salad here in a couple of months, I'm gonna be so glad that I planted it today. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
I bless you. Until next time.